thumbprint in the top left-hand corner of the envelope. Hmm. Well, postman's probably. Addressed from the Carlton Club yesterday evening, Holmes. Yes. Watson, do go on. I was just about to. Sir James Damery presents his compliments to Mr. Sherlock Holmes and will call upon him at 4.30 tomorrow. Sir James begs to say that the matter upon which he desires to consult Mr. Holmes is very delicate and also very important. Pretty formal, eh, Holmes? Hmm. What do you know of this man, Damery? Only that his name is a household word in society. I can tell you a little more than that. Oh? He has a reputation for arranging delicate matters which are to be kept out of the papers. Really? He's a man of the world with a natural turn for diplomacy. I'm bound to hope, therefore, that this is not a false scent. He must have some real need of our assistance. And if I'm not mistaken, that is his footstep upon our stair. Ah. Sir James Damery? That is so. Oh, do come in, sir. This is Mr. Sherlock Holmes. How do you do, Mr. Holmes? How do you do, Sir James? And Dr. Watson, I presume? Correct, sir. Mr. Holmes may find your collaboration very necessary, I fancy. Indeed. Pray take the basket chair, Sir James. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Now, sir. Mr. Holmes, we are dealing with a man to whom violence is familiar. I should say that there is no more dangerous man in Europe. The most dangerous man in Europe? I've had several opponents to whom that flattering term has been applied. Have you ever heard of Baron Gruner? The Austrian murderer. Oh, <laughs> there's no getting past you at all, Mr. Holmes. So you've sized him up as a murderer already. It is my business to follow the details of continental crime. Who could possibly have read what happened at Prague and have any doubts about the man's guilt? It was a purely technical, legal point and the death of a witness that saved him. I'm as sure he killed his wife when that so-called accident happened in the Splugen Pass as if I'd seen him do it. Then you will sympathise with a client in whose interests I'm acting. And who is your client, Sir James? Uh, Mr. Holmes, I must beg you not to press that question. It is important that his honoured name should be in no way dragged into the matter. I'm sorry, Sir James. I am accustomed to mystery at one end of my cases, but to have it at both ends is too confusing. Mr. Holmes, may I at least lay all that I can before you? So long as it is understood that I commit myself to nothing? You've no doubt heard of General de Merville. De Merville of the Khyber Pass? The same. Yes, I have heard of him. He has a daughter, Violet. She is young, beautiful, accomplished, and very rich. It is this daughter, Mr. Holmes, whom we must save from the clutches of a fiend. Baron Gruner has a hold over her? The strongest of all holds where a woman is concerned, love. As you may have heard, the fellow is extraordinarily handsome, with the most fascinating manner, and all that air of romance and mystery. Well, you know what I mean. The sort of thing that means so much to a woman. But how did he come to meet a lady of Miss Violet de Merville's standing? It was on a Mediterranean yachting cruise. Uh -huh. The villain attached himself to her and won her heart. Uh -huh. She is obsessed by him. She won't hear a word against him. Everything has been done to cure her of it. And so? She proposes to marry him next month. I see. She has a will of iron... And she is of age. Does she know about his past? The Austrian episode? Ah, the cunning devil has told her every bit of scandal he's had a part in. But he's done it in such a way that he always turns out to be the... the innocent martyr. But surely, Sir James, in telling us all this, you have inadvertently let out the name of your client. General de Merville? Yes. Well, Dr. Watson, I could deceive you, perhaps, by letting you think that. But it wouldn't be true. De Merville is a broken old man. His daughter is set on marrying a scheming adventurer. All I dare say of my client is that he's an old friend who has known the general intimately for years and cannot see this tragedy acted out without some attempt to stop it. Sir James, your problem interests me. The Baron's present address, please. Vernon Lodge, near Kingston. Uh -huh. It's a large place. He's a rich man now, which I fancy makes him more dangerous than ever. Can you give me anything further about him? Well, uh, expensive tastes, you know. Horse fancier, but quite an artistic side to him. I believe he's an authority on Chinese pottery. He wrote a book about it. Well, I'll say good day to you, gentlemen. Good day. Good day, Sir James. Well, Watson, any views? I suppose you will see the young lady yourself. My dear Watson, if our poor old broken father can't move her, what can a stranger expect to do? No, I think we must begin from a different angle. Perhaps Shinwell Johnson could be a help. Shinwell Johnson? That ruffian? He has the entree to every nightclub, doss house, and gambling den in this city. His two convictions have invested him with a certain glamour. He also has a quick eye and an active brain, which I'm happy to say have been placed at the disposal of the forces of law and order on more than one occasion. Repentance is a noble thing, Watson. Two terms in Parkhurst have worked wonders in Master Shinwell Johnson. An informer, eh? Not really. 
If he'd acted for the police, he'd have been found out by now. Fortunately, however, he confines his attention to cases which never come directly into the courts. I tell you what, Watson, we'll meet for dinner this evening at our place in the Strand, eh? Mm. Meanwhile, I'll just have a word or two with Master Shinwell Johnson and another gentleman. Capital soup. Never varies, thank heaven. Oh, never mind the soup, Holmes. You have a particularly nasty delight in keeping me waiting for your news. <laughs> oh, there's nothing much to tell. Johnson is on the prowl for us. He may pick up some useful garbage in the darker recesses of the underworld. But surely, if the lady won't accept what's already known about Baron Gruner, why should anything we can find out change her mind? Who for knows? Her? Who knows? Woman's heart and mind are insoluble puzzles to the male. Mm. Murder might be condoned or explained, and yet some smaller offence might rankle. Has Baron Gruner remarked to me... Gruner remarked to you? Uh, oh, to be sure. You know how I love to come to grips with my man. I like to meet him, eye to eye, and read for myself what stuff he's made of. When I'd given Johnson his orders, I took a cab out to Kingston. I found the Baron in a most affable mood. Did he recognize you? Oh, there was no difficulty about that. I sent in my card. He received me at once. I rather thought I should see you sooner or later, Mr. Holmes. You have been engaged, no doubt, by General de Merville to try to stop my marriage with his daughter Violet. Hmm? Is it not so? As you wish. My dear man, let me tell you at once, you will only ruin your well-deserved reputation to say nothing of incurring some danger. Let me strongly advise you to draw off at once. Curiously enough, that was the very advice I had intended giving you. So? I have a respect for your brains, Baron, and the little I've seen of your personality has not lessened it. But let me put it to you as man to man. Very well. No one wants to rake up your past. It is over, and you are now in smooth waters. But if you persist in this adventurous marriage... You will raise up a swarm of powerful enemies who will never leave you alone until they have made England too hot to hold you. I ask you, is the game worth it? <laughs> oh, oh, dear. <laughs> Excuse my amusement, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> but it really is funny to see you trying to play a hand with no cards in it at all. <laughs> I don't think anyone could do it better. But it is rather pathetic, all the same. Not a color card there, Mr. Holmes. Nothing but the smallest of the small. If you choose to think so. I know. Now let me make this thing clear to you. For my own hand is so strong, I can afford to show it. I have been fortunate enough to win the entire affection of this lady. This has been given to me in spite of the fact that I told her clearly of all the unhappy incidents in my past life. I also told her that certain wicked and designing persons, I, I, I hope you recognize, would come to her and tell these things, and I warned her how to treat them. Then there is nothing more to be said. If you will excuse me, I will wish you good day, Baron Gruner. Certainly. The pleasure has all been mine. But before you go, though, Mr. Holmes... Well? Did you know Lebrun, the French agent... Yes, I knew him. Do you know what happened to him? I heard he was beaten by some apache in Montmartre and crippled for life. Quite true. By a curious coincidence, though, he had been inquiring into my affairs only a week before. Don't do it, Mr. Holmes. It's not a lucky thing to do. So there you are, Watson. You are up to date at last. The fellow seems dangerous enough. Mm -hmm. Mighty dangerous. I disregard the blusterer, but this is the sort of man who says rather less than he means. Must you interfere? I mean, uh, does it matter so much if he does marry the girl? They're free to choose, after all. Considering that he undoubtedly murdered his last wife, I should say it mattered very much. 
Our illustrious client evidently thinks so too. But come along, drink up your coffee and come home with me. Our friend Shinwell Johnson is due to call on us. Come in, Johnson, come in. Uh, gentlemen, allow me to introduce Miss Kitty Winter, who I took the liberty of bringing along of me. What she don't know... Ah, oh, but she can speak for herself. Yes, we're old mates, Shinwell and me, mister. Same address almost, eh? Hell, London. That's it. Find us every time. But there's a chap who ought to be down in a lower hell than us if there was any justice in the world, I tell you. I gather we have your good wishes in our little investigation, Miss Winter. I'll say so. If I can help put Adelbert Gruner where he belongs, I'm yours to the rattle. You know him, then? What I am, Gruner made me. Straight he did. Has Shinwell told you how the matter stands? I have, sir. Left nothing out. The lady is madly in love with him, Miss Winter. She's been told everything about him, but she cares nothing. Told about the murder of his wife? Yes. Well, she must have a nerve. She puts it all down as lies. Well, can't you show her proofs? What proofs? Well, well, and I have proof myself. If I went and told her how he used me... Would you do that? Oh, would I? There's one or two more murders than the one what made such a fuss. I know a few things. And there's that book of his. A book? I tell you, mister, that man collects women like anyone collects butters or moths. They're all in that book. All the details. Shameful. Names, snapshots, things you wouldn't believe any man would write down. I'd show her a thing or two, and I know where he keeps it. You do? Well, leastways, I know where he always did keep it. Special place he had, in a big cabinet thing. Where he keeps a lot of his Chinese crockery. Very interesting, Miss Winter. I think I shall take advantage of your offer to confront the lady in question with what you know. As for the book, I think we will keep that to ourselves for the time being. Then if all else fails... Watson. Yes, sir. Tomorrow morning, Miss Winter and I will pay our call. Be good enough to meet me for luncheon afterwards and I'll post you up. Our place in the Strand will do, I think. Very well, Holmes. Watson, my dear fellow, don't look so scared. I, it's not as bad as it seems. Thank heaven for that. I'm not so bad at single stick myself. Took most of their blows on my guard. It was the second fellow who was too much for me. The papers say they got away. Oh, they were well prepared. Uh, shall I? Uh, shall I go to the police? No, no. Wait a little. I have my plans. The first thing is to exaggerate my injuries. Who to? Everyone. They'll come to you for news. Laid on thick. Lucky if I live the week out. Concussion, delirium. You can't overdo it. Very well. Anything else? Tell Shinwell Johnson to get that girl, Kitty Winter, out of the way. If they dared try to do me in, it's not likely they'll neglect her. I'll go now. Right. Oh, yes. and put out my pipe on the table, will you? And the tobacco? Come in each morning and we'll plan our campaign. Well, Holmes, you are looking better. Tonight's papers say you've developed erysipelas. <laughs> Capital, my dear fellow. I shall enjoy having that very much. Uh, seriously, though, Holmes, I have some news you won't find so amusing. What? Baron Gruner sails from Liverpool on Friday. Sails? To the States. Important business to settle before his impending marriage, etc., etc. Friday. Only three more days. Mark my words, he wants to put himself out of harm's way until the last moment, but he won't, Watson. By the Lord Harry, he won't. Now listen, I want you to do something for me. Of course, Holmes. Spend the next 24 hours studying Chinese pottery. Very well, studying it. Chinese pottery? Your friend Lomax of the London Library should be just the man to help you. Yes, but I... Now, now, no questions. Off you go to your crammer. 
I'll see you here tomorrow evening. Well, Holmes, I shall never be able to believe the newspapers again after this. They say you're dying. Well done, Watson. Now, as you see, I'm on my legs again and feeling none the worse. And now, have you learned your lessons? As best I could. It's a big subject. Chinese ceramics in 24 hours. Granted, granted. The point is, could you keep up an intelligent conversation on the subject? Uh, I think so. For a while, anyway. Then pray hand me that little box. Thank you. Now, take a look at this. I see. This saucer is the real eggshell pottery of the Ming dynasty. Exquisite. The sight of this would drive a real connoisseur wild. You'll have to handle it carefully. I shall? Now, I should say Dr. Hill Barton of number 369 Half Moon Street must handle it carefully. That is your name for this evening, Watson. And here is a visiting card I've had prepared for you. And uh, uh, what is Dr. Hill Barton to do? At half past eight, he will call upon Baron Gruner. An appointment has been made saying you are bringing with you a specimen of an absolutely unique set of Ming. You are a collector. This piece has come your way. You have heard of the Baron's interest in the subject, and you're not averse to selling. At a price. What price? Well asked, Watson. You would certainly fall down badly if you didn't know the value of your own wares. Actually, this saucer was got for me by Sir James Damery. You will not be exaggerating if you suggest that it could hardly be matched in the world today. Then I could suggest that the set could be valued by an expert. Excellent. And having done all that? No more instructions, my dear chap. We will let the interview take care of itself. Pray. Sit down, Dr. Barton. Thank you. I was just looking over my own treasures and wondering whether I could really afford to add to them. Uh, this little tang specimen from the seventh century will interest you, I am sure. Oh, yes. That is delightful. Oh, did you ever see finer workmanship or a better clay? No. Oh. But have you the Ming saucer with you? Yes, here it is, Baron Gruner. Ah, now, what do you think of oh. that? Hmm? Oh, very fine. <laughs> oh, very fine indeed. And you say you have a set of six to correspond? That is, sir. What puzzles me is that I should not have heard of such magnificent specimens. I only know one in England to match this, and it is certainly not likely to be on the market. Would it uh, uh, be indiscreet, Doctor, to ask how you obtain this? Does it really matter? Uh, you can see it is genuine for yourself. Mm -hmm. As to the value, I'm content to take an expert's valuation. That the piece is genuine is certain. And yet, in dealing with objects of such value, one naturally wishes to know all about the transaction. Oh, suppose it should prove afterwards that you had no right to sell. I would guarantee you against any claim of that sort. <laughs> that, of course, would open up the question as to what your guarantee was worth. My bankers would answer that. Quite so, quite so. And yet the whole transaction strikes me as rather unusual. Oh, well, Baron, uh, I should hate to waste your valuable time. Uh, I have given you first offer. As I understood, you were a connoisseur, but I shall have no difficulty in other quarters. No. May I ask, Doctor... Who told you I was a connoisseur? Well, you've written a book on the subject. Have you read the book? Uh, uh, no. Oh, dear me. This becomes more and more difficult to understand. You, too, are a connoisseur and collector with a piece as valuable as this in your hands, and yet you have never troubled to consult the one book which would have told you its value. Well, I, 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 I'm a very busy man. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a doctor in practice. If a man has a hobby... He follows it up, whatever his other pursuits may be. Well, as a connoisseur, you would have no objection if I asked you a few questions to test you. Hmm? I would ask you, what do you know of the Emperor Shamu, and how do you associate him with the Shouzhou Inn near Nara? Tell me a little about the Northern Wei Dynasty, and its place in the history of ceramics. Oh, really, sir, so this is intolerable. Do you even know how many Ming dynasties there were? Sir, I came here to do you a favor, not to be examined like a schoolboy. My knowledge may be inferior to yours, but I shall certainly not answer questions put in so offensive a way. No, 
Dr. Barton, if you are a doctor at all. How dare you, Custis Barton? You are here on another game. You are an emissary of Sherlock Holmes, aren't you? I... The fellow's dying, hmm? So he sends his hirelings to keep watch on me. Isn't that it? Well, you made your way in here, but by heaven, you may find it harder to get out again. All right, Watson, now you can leave it to me. What this? Careful, Holmes. He's getting a gun. Out of my way, everyone. It's my turn now. Miss Winter. Keep back. Oh, no. This won't take a second. There, Baron Adelbert Gruner. That face won't charm any more like me again. Vitriol all over his face. Quick, Holmes. For the love of heaven, find me some kind of oil. We may save his eyes if we're quick enough, but hurry, hurry. Horrible, Holmes. Horrible. The wages of sin, Watson, the wages of sin. And believe me, there was plenty of sin to answer for. Oh, but not like that. I assure you, Watson, I had no idea she had vitriol with her. She came with me to find that book she told us about. Our time was limited by your knowledge of Chinese ceramics. It was our last chance. You understand, Sir Jack? Of course, of course. The man was a murderer, Watson, and would have been again. Well, I suppose so. Anyway, he's disfigured for life now. Miss Violet de Merville is out of danger. So it seems. Not yet, I'm afraid. Women of her type don't react like that. She would probably love him all the more as a disfigured martyr. No, Sir James, take this filthy book back to your client and tell him not to spare her feelings with it. It is his moral side that has to be destroyed, not the physical. This book will bring her down to earth as nothing else could. It is in his own writing. She can't get past that. Very well. It's been a terrible business. But you've done wonders, both of you. Good day. Good, good day, Sir good day, James. James. And the police will have a good deal to say to Miss Kitty Winter, I fear, Watson. Though in her case, there are certainly extenuating circumstances. I expect you're right. But to think that any woman... Ah, me, I fear you have something to learn yet. If I were to tell you... Holmes, quickly! What? Come to the window. Why, what is it? Sir James Damery, that uh, broom he just got into. Yeah? You see it? Yeah. They're, 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 they're moving off now. The coat of arms on the side. Aha. Uh -huh. Now I know who our illustrious client was. Why, he... He's a chivalrous gentleman and a loyal friend to a lady in great danger. Let that be enough for us, my dear Watson. Now and forever. <laughs> <laughs> 